All right, as I was saying, now we're recording. You've got the textbook, you've got the YouTube videos, and then we got this back and forth, kind of like a group um, office hour. If you need me, you can always email me and we can do a Zoom uh, if you have questions and maybe you can record. Yeah, you're right. You're right, I wasn't. Thank you, Michael. Um, and so, so that's what I'm thinking. The flashcards should help. If you keep doing that, that'll be good. I'll figure out how do I wanna collect those and the hand ins, just keep it going. I've got some that I've still gotta get graded because I've been so busy with everything else um, that I haven't got to that. But I think this weekend, it should be good. Um, and uh, I think that's that's how we'll be rolling. And I think it'll, I think it'll ultimately may, maybe be good. It'll be good to have the lectures up. Any questions? We good? Let's see. What's this? Okay. Um, okay. Cool. So feel free to hit your mute button and talk, or uh, type in the chat. But you might need to to alert me to it. So let's get going and. We're going to do this. All right. So let's, uh, I think you can see that board now. Does that look good? Can you see the board? Thumbs up. If you go to the reactions, you can give me thumbs up too, so I can see that you're you're all good. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Jonah and Rave. All right. Cool. And I think you'll be able to see it, but just let me know. This is all for you. We'll get it done. I might have to go low to go high. I don't know. <laughs> so what I thought I would do today, and again, I'm open from you guys. Are we going to take the test online? Probably. Uh, I think it's highly unlikely that we will uh, be in class together again. And even in the summer, those classes might have to be online everywhere in the state. Um, and we're not even sure about the fall. So we will have to see how this all transpires, but we'll roll, make the best of it. And, uh, and the exams, I will try to design in such a way that uh, I can monitor and that it tests your, your knowledge. And so we'll be talking about that. The test will be after uh, spring break. So not next week, because that's spring break, but the week after. I'll do it on Thursday of that week, which means we're gonna to have to really get into chapter five. That's gonna go pretty fast. Chapter five and six will go fast. Uh, and I'll rely on some of the YouTube to do that. Um, but I'll do it Thursday just to make sure we've all got it sorted out. Um, I'll need you to have, I'll, I'll send an email, but I'll need you to have a microphone and a video that works uh, in order to to take that. So one way or another, borrowing a laptop or something. But there are different ways. Um, we've got a few options. So, and it'll be kind of like the other one. I might have you submit a drawing uh, as, a, as a picture. Um, we'll see, I'm still working that out. Let's do this. So the best way to, to do this, whether it be Zoom or whether it be guitar, or whatever is, and some of you know this, I know, so I apologize, but um, but a lot of people don't, and we, and we come to know this. That is that we can, when we learn, initially, when you read something and it's totally new, it's just confusing, and it's going to be, that's okay. So that's why you don't want to go too slowly, because you just go through it fast, and then go back through it, and then go back through it, and then go back through it, and then eventually it starts making sense. So at some point you wanna be reviewing, keep the reviewing going and you can start picking up your speed. So I'm gonna do a quick review of what you've seen on the YouTube, namely the uh, why we have seasons. And then I'm gonna talk about moon phases. And I'll leave the eclipses to the YouTube video, which is, I don't know, eight minutes. It's pretty short. And then also the tidal effect um, giving moon synchronous orbit, but I say everything there, so I'll leave it to you to ask me those questions. Um, and I think it's pretty cool, actually. I, I think that's a lot of fun. When we talk about the last section, 
we uh, we really build on what we do here, and you get I think of it as dessert. You uh, we get to answer, ask the question: Is there really a dark side of the moon? And we get to answer the question: Can we blame it on a full moon? So uh, that's that's pretty fun. And then after that, we're going to start studying worlds, starting with Earth, then going to Moon, our solar system, planets in our solar system, thinking about what it, different features of planets. And I think that's a little less abstract than trying to imagine what we would see from space. Okay, so any feedback is appreciated. Let's do this. All right. So let's go. Uh, Chapter four, section three is why seasons. And again, just chime in. Uh, the, the audio is easier for me because I can hear that. So let's do this. And I can stick around after too to answer any questions. Whatever you got, definitely here to help you learn this and get the units as well. So, we know that we're combining two points of view. Oops. I'm gonna say seen from Earth and I started saying seasons. Seen from Earth, chapter one. Okay, and let's review real fast what we did. Stop me, got a question. If it's not clear, whatever it is, let me know. So we know that seen from Earth, we step outside, um, and if we, for seasons, if we face south-ish, then east, eat sandwich is here. This quick review of chapter one, because you need to really retain this for the final exam too. And we know that we watch where sun rises, how high it gets, and where it sets. We know also that there's a line that is very helpful. The line that divides the east side of the sky and the west side of our sky. This is our ground. This is our sky. That's what that drawing means. Initially, it's like, what are you talking about? So hopefully this makes sense. The line that goes up from south and over to north. We know that this is really a circle here up and over to north is called the what? Somebody, somebody help me. What's that line called? Meridian. Meridian, yay. Meridian, think of middle. Okay, cool. And so we know that sun rises. Um, I still want that, but that doesn't matter. On one of the days of our year, it rises the farthest, not to the south side, but to the north side. North is back here. The farthest on the north side of east. And then throughout the day, it looks like it's going around us, but we know it's not. And it's before the meridian or antes meridian, AM, right? Good old AM. And we know it goes up high, high in our sky. How high depends on our latitude, but don't, don't worry about that. Around noon, around uh, 12 noon. It's on the meridian and there's daylight saving times and we're not gonna worry about that either too much. And then at some point it's past the meridian and then it's gonna to set to the farthest, the north side of west. Ask me if there's any questions. So sunrise, noon, sunset, and we'll get into that a lot this, uh, during this little session. So that's what we're watching. We're watching sun on one, day. Um, but if we keep watching it from the same place, we'd find that sun rises and starts getting closer to east. It sets getting closer to west, and it goes not as high. So about a month later, let me write this. What day of the year is this? Somebody? June 21st. June 21, called the summer solstice, right? So hopefully you know, I know some of you guys are like, okay, we know this, we know this, but not everyone does. 
Not everyone had it. So now's the time to, to know it and have it. And if you get to the point where you really know something, most like good musicians, athletes, et cetera, the ones that do really well, they keep doing it again. Even when you think you've got it, you don't stop and say, I've got it good enough. No, you, you keep doing it again. Anyway, June, July, summer, August, rises, sets over here. And then September, it's going to rise directly east. Okay, we're just gonna pin this down now and go midway. So this is like September 21st, no one cares, whatever, September 21st. And that is the fall equinox, equal night equinox, 12 hours a night, 12 hours a day. Not exactly for a subtle reason we won't go into, but I can't but about that. In fact, there's fall, so summer leads into fall. And then September, October, it'll rise there. November and then December, it will rise the farthest to the south side. Not go very high. We're going to talk about that. And sets there. So that's December 20th or 21st. We'll see. And of course, we know that's the winter solstice. Solstice, sun standing still, because it'll rise here and kind of stop. It doesn't change that much for a few days. It's kind of a little bit going this way. And now, January. November, December, January. November and January are the same path. February and March, and that's an important one. March will say 21. I'll talk about that in a second. Spring or vernal equinox is the same exact path. Rising in the east, setting in the west. March. April, May, June, July, August. Okay, so that's what we see. That's what we saw. And that gave us our calendar, and we could watch it and go, oh, it repeats. Okay, cool. Why is that happening? I don't know. Sun's going around us. Why is it doing this? If you think about sun going around us and why it's doing that, you don't know. And, and that's what we're answering here. If you've seen the YouTube, I really hope you've seen the YouTube. Because if not, it's, it's hard. This stuff is hard enough that you can't get it the first time. But it's accessible enough that you can get it. And that's my target uh, for this course. Okay, we, happy spring, we just had spring. I think I might have mentioned this. It happened on March 19th. It was the earliest we had spring in 124 years. You don't need to remember that. But it was 1149 p.m., almost March 20th. It was March 19th. But we had the leap year, so anyway. We, we're in spring now. Hey, we got spring break. And uh, in the season, so this is what we see from Earth. People around the globe, without even talking to each other, noticed this. And then the question is, <clears throat> seen from space, why, why do we have seasons? And the answer I'm going to write here, and then we'll illustrate it in detail on the next one. So this is what you want to know. If you know this, you've got it. You're good. Um, but, but think about it. Don't just memorize answers, and don't just memorize um, you know, the pictures. Think about it, because you have to contextualize it uh, to answer the questions on the exam. So <clears throat> why? The answer is this. Earth, Earth's spin axis, let me write it this way, North Pole, South Pole, spin axis. I took some stuff home. All right, this, here's the North Pole, here's the South Pole, and the handle's kind of like the spin axis. Earth spins around North Pole, South Pole. That's what makes it the North Pole and South Pole. Its spin axis is tilted, and we'll talk about that, is tilted. See what that, so you have to know what that means. You have to be able to see that. And if you don't think about it, you won't run into some mistakes that are common. 
So you got to think about it, go, hey, is that true? And then go, oh, that's not true. Correct it. Earth's North Pole spin axis is tilted, and it's tilted uh, 23. 0.5 degrees, and we'll talk about what that means. And this gives, there's really three things, and I, I can't decide it on the next one whether I'll put this third one in there. It's, it's usually not discussed, and I'm not sure why no one says it, but uh, two reasons. It changes. Now this, it really does. Initially, it's overwhelming, but it really will make a lot of sense. Um, can you guys read that? Is that okay? Yes. So, yes, cool. Changes the concentration, which is the warming of sunlight. Check the YouTube, check the book. It also changes the amount of time in sunlight, which most humans call day. Ordinary, ordinary people call it day. We call it the amount of time in the sunlight. So that tilt does that. So let's talk about why. And you've got that in the book, but I think I'll have to post these YouTubes, I, I might have, or this, this video on YouTube, which I don't really want to do, but our canvas doesn't allow us that much space. Okay, this is what we see. We didn't know if it was heliocentric, geocentric. Now we know it's heliocentric, and now we even know this. So, the reason we see this is because of this. Let me explain that. Go ahead. You are not interrupting. If you have a question, you are helping. So, okay. So here's what's going on. Key point. If sun is here, then Earth's tilt couple things if it wasn't tilted we'd have North Pole and South Pole like this and it would spin like that in that case we would have 12 hours a day and 12 hours a night if Earth was tilted 90 degrees it would be like that and Uranus is close to that, which is a weird planet. And it would stay North Pole plant pointing not towards sun, but to the right. So now North Pole is pointed to sun. Now South Pole is pointed to sun. That's not us. If it was 45 degrees, it would be halfway. So zero degrees, 90 degrees, 45 degrees, and so I think this makes it a nice way to remember is roughly half of 45 degrees. Now half of 45 is 22.5. It's really 23.5. I don't, you know, who, that's fine. It's just, we're getting an introduction to this, so it's going to be about that much. Now I might draw it a little more exaggerated so we can see the, see it. Clearly, I've drawn the size of Earth compared to Sun much more exaggerated. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, and the thing is, if it's tilted, let's say in my picture to the right, here it's tilted towards Sun, North Pole tilted towards Sun, South Pole tilted away, they're flipped. I go over here, North Pole tilted away from Sun, South Pole tilted towards, they're flipped, just like the seasons are flipped. That's point number one. Is everybody okay with that? Give me some thumbs. It's funny they don't give you a thumbs down in there, but we good? Cool? Thank you. All right. 
speak up, participate. It's the key. It's not knowing all the answers by any means. It's jumping in and, and playing. Cool. All right, so it stays tilted like that. That's just the way it is. You wouldn't know that. Our ancestors didn't. One big point is people didn't know for thousands of years. Why should you have to know? Okay. In fact, you might ask, why do you even have to know any of this? Well, number one is you're getting credit for it. But number two is uh, we're getting a sense of living on a spinning ball in space and moving through space in a sense of wonder that inspires art and inspires us as humans. So that's another, another reason. You don't have to know this, but knowing it changes your sense. And when we get into chapter five, we'll talk about planet Earth. And I hope that that changes your sense too, because um, personally, I think living on this planet, it's a pretty cool planet. And it'd be good if we thought about things other, be, other than profit margins, which are real, but we need to think about other things. Okay, here we are. So let's talk about what happens. Now, there's another really, really important point. Okay, and that is, thankfully, I got to meet you guys in person and we got to be in the planetarium. Softball. We know that if you put the softball at the back of the planetarium, you can do it either way. Then Earth would be a grain of sand. You can get, we're going to do this, 100 Earths, 109 from 50, 100 Earths across Sun. That's how big Sun is, a grain of sand. Imagine softball at the back wall, grain of sand here. If I take that grain of sand and I tilt it towards the back wall or away, is it getting any closer to the back wall of the planetarium? The back wall of the planetarium way out there. 10 long steps, as long as you can make. What do you think? If I tilt a grain of sand to the back wall, is, it, is the North Pole getting closer to the back wall? Somebody, who's got it? Type it in. If I tilt, this is Earth, Sun. Earth is a grain of sand. Sun is at the back wall of the planetarium. Grain of sand's at the whiteboard. If I tilt the grain of sand towards the back of the planetarium, does that make it any closer? Come on, I'm waiting for you. We could do a lot more if you give me an answer. No, 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 no. So, so technically, yes, but not enough to make any difference, right? Not enough to make any difference. Now, if I draw it like this, this is a ridiculous scale. We know Sun and Earth are one AU away, 93 million miles. So tilting Earth towards Sun doesn't make the North Pole closer. A lot of people think that, which is fine. It's a reasonable thought, except when you understand the scale of this uh, softball Sun and green of sand Earth, tilting Earth does not make it closer. Now, we also know from Kepler's first law, that Earth is a little closer, but it's closer January 4th, somewhere in the 5th, 3rd, right? You can think January 1st, really, closer. And it's farthest away July 4th, around there. And so clearly that's not the seasons. In fact, for us, we will have, on July 4th, we'll have summer. But in the Southern Hemisphere, they have winter. They say July 4th, ooh, it's cold. It's kind of weird, huh? December or January 1st, when we're farthest away or closest. January 1st, we should be farther because we're, oh, wait a minute. We're actually closest January 1st. South is having summer while we have winter. It's not how close we are to sun. So let's draw this out. Uh, make sure you understand the details because the details make everything. I like sports and music um, and lots of things, science. It's all better with details. So we're gonna draw Earth over here and we'll draw it in more detail, but I'm not gonna draw North Pole there. I'm gonna draw a side view. This is a side view, North Pole's up here. Know which view you're doing. This is a top view. 
this is nice because I can see moon going around this way versus moon going around this way. This is nice because you can tell if I tilt it. Here I can't, I'm not gonna worry about the tilt when I draw it like this, but here. And so that's it, we're gonna do North Pole here and South Pole here, and that's the spin axis. But North Pole is gonna be still slanted the same way south pole and it's going to spin around spin around once every 24 hours now let's layer in some details so this is what you should be able to answer questions about subtle questions um or draw perhaps if i can get you to upload stuff now i will say on the exam there will not be enough time for you to learn it on the exam I mean, you're going to have to answer those questions. You're going to have to know this stuff. You don't have to get 100%, but you got to know it. So don't rely on, oh, I'll have plenty of time. So you won't have time. You could have the whole book or whatever. You're not going to have time to figure this out. You got to know it. So make sure you know this stuff cold. And here's our big picture. All right. So here's sun. My drawing is silly because we know how far earth would be if sun was and we know earth would be a tiny tiny thing there but i'm going to draw earth big so we can see the main point so i'm going to draw earth big over here and i'm going to draw earth big over here and i'm going to notice that the days i'm going to do are not when we're closest not when we're farthest i'm going to do the solstices so we're going to do june 21, December 21. And I, I think this is all in the YouTube. I do it a little differently so you can see it. And also so you can ask questions, which is the real point here. Now, that, these are Earth, that's Sun, not to scale. Sunlight would be coming in here from the right. Sunlight would be coming when we're here from the left. Six months, because we know that one year is one orbit. So about six months apart. All right, so now we're going to draw a few lines, about five lines really. So we are first going to put in the terminator and shade the dark side of Earth. Forget about the tilt. Forget about the tilt now. That means sunlight's going to come in here from way out there. Sunlight's going to bathe it in light here. I'm going to label this. Now I have I have 10 steps in the book and on YouTube. Really, once you do eight, you know it. And once you do it enough, you don't need the steps. I'm going to say sunlight comes in here. I'll call that the terminator. That's night. Over here is the sunlight or day. Whereas sunlight coming here is going to light the left side. I'm going to go like this. Call that the terminator. That's night. That's day. Think about it though. Don't just copy it. It won't make any sense. But this is abstract. You never see this. We don't see this. You never ever see this because you'd have to be an alien. There's my alien. I lost my other alien. It must be in the room. Uh, there's my alien. You got to be an alien or somewhere in a spaceship to see this or see it from a from a satellite, so we can see it nowadays. Okay, Terminator, night and day, cool. And we're gonna spin. Now this is a side view, but we're tilted. So now I'm gonna throw in North Pole. And I'm gonna tilt it a little more than the normal tilt, 23 and a half for the actual tilt. I'll tilt it, let's say here. And so I'm just gonna put NP for North Pole. We did this before. And if it's tilted over here, then over here, North Pole is in the night, so I'm going to do it in black, North Pole. Still tilted that way. And if North Pole is tilted that way, then South Pole is tilted down here. And South Pole now is in the light, because the light and dark are flipped. And then, I have the spin axis, like the handle. 
go through the center, try to make it fairly good. It doesn't, don't waste time trying to make it perfect. That's the spin axis. So Earth spins. Spin. At this point, it should be review. So it starts start clicking like, oh, this is actually, it starts getting easier, but initially it's a lot of stuff. Okay, cool. We're almost there, almost there. So then I go, all right, where's, where do I live? Well, I live in the Northern Hemisphere. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about what it's like in the Northern Hemisphere. And we're gonna talk about what it's like in the Southern Hemisphere. And then we're gonna flip that and we're gonna say, what's it like in the Northern Hemisphere? And what's it like in the Southern Hemisphere? And you'll be able to see this. This picture will give you a deep sense. Okay, well, to do that, I need my latitude. And to know my latitude, latitudes are parallel. I can't hold all these pens and caps. That's good. A north latitude is how far north? A south latitude, how far south of the equator? Also called parallels because they're parallel to the equator. Notice what happens if I tilt my north and south pole. The equator tilts. It's perpendicular, right? It's perpendicular. So just do that, right? Don't do this. Do that. Okay. And you can do it here too. So people get that messed up because there's a lot of lines and you're going, ah, and you're just memorizing. No, don't memorize it. Think about the globe. If I tilt it, the equator goes like this. And I'll write equ. And it stays tilted that way the whole time. So same picture over here. The only thing I flipped is the light and dark side. And I'm going to put equ. Now this one, and especially the moon phase, these are the hardest drawings for the whole, for the whole uh, class. And you see, you can do this if you stick with it. Now, the northern latitude then, let's grab some light. So northern latitude, and I'm going to do this. I'm just going to do it as dots right now, parallel to the equator. I'm going to put NLT, northern latitude. And I'm going to go down here, dots, SLT. And so... If you're in San Francisco Bay Area, 38 degrees latitude, as we spin around on the globe, we don't spin this way. We don't go like that. We're parallel to the equator. We go like this around that axis, along that line. And as we do over here, we're going to have night. But when we cross the terminator, we start our day. And we're gonna spend a lot more time in the sunlight than we do out of the sunlight. In fact, that's gonna be the longest day of the year. And for us, that's the summer solstice. Go June 24th, summer solstice. But what about the folks in the Southern Hemisphere? Down in Brazil, wherever, Chile, New Zealand. Well, they don't have a short night and long day. They've got a long night spinning around. And then they cross the Terminator. That's going to be sunrise. And then they're going to have a oops, short day. In fact, they're going to have their longest night. And so for them, it is the winter solstice. Any questions on that? If you can see that once again, 
Yeah. Well, I'm Michael. I'm going to come back to that. Uh, okay. All right. Fine. We can do it now. So check this out. On this day, notice that these folks here have 24 hours a day. It's called the Arctic Circle. And on this day, in fact, for a few days, for quite a few days, it's going to be mostly day, night. Except it is going to hit at a shallow angle. We'll come back to that too. Over here in what we call the Antarctic, 24 hours of night. However, what happens six months later? It doesn't stay like that. Six months later, it stays tilted to the right. Draw your lines parallel to the equator. I'll do a little dashed lines because I'm going to color them. Grab some night and day. Make sure you grab some night and day. This is a southern latitude. This is a northern latitude. This is a really, like I say, it's an uncommon perspective. For some reason, people don't teach this. What we experience in the northern hemisphere is going to be a short day, and we're going to cross. I'm going to make it black here because when we cross the terminator into night, of course, we most humans call that sunset. And we're going to have a long day. In fact, we're going to have our longest day. And so in the northern hemisphere, we're going to have on that day, we call it, or 20th, whatever, the winter solstice whereas in the south they're going to have a long in fact their longest day cross the terminator into the night sunset and the shortest night and they call that the summer solstice now we're not done but we're almost done this tells us how the tilt changes the length of our day, how much time we're in the sun. We're in the sun a long time. Here we're going to get warming. We're not in the sun very long here. That's not as much warming. That's one big player. For the no northern hemisphere, This is why we have a long day versus a short day. And then it goes back to a long day as we come back here. And then it goes back to a short day and a long day and a short day. But something else happens. Oh, in the Arctic Circle, now it's 24 hours of night. The Antarctic. 24 hours a day. So it flips. In fact, the more north or south of the equator you are, the more extreme it is. I won't ask you about the Arctic and Antarctic Circle just because it's too much, but you can see it right there. And that's pretty nice, I think. The other thing it does, besides changing how long we're in the sun, which certainly warms you, is it changes the concentration. Now, I'll leave some of the steps of that explanation to the text, and uh, I might have covered that some on the YouTube. I think I did. So let's imagine standing here. Now, we don't stand up. This is ground, so that's our ground. Here's our ground, right? Versus this person down here, their ground is along that line like that, right? So. And if you think about it, if you want to warm your hand on the fire, it is kind of chilly out, right? If you want to warm your hand, you're going to go like that. You're not going to go like that. Oh, let me warm my fingertips on the fire. Let me warm my hand on the fire. That gives you more concentrated, more direct light, more warming. That makes a difference. If it's just skimming your surface, like down here, or even more so here, if it's just skimming your surface, you're not getting as much concentrated light. And that's not as much warming. So you're having a short time in the sun, and when you are in the sun, you're not getting much warming. A long time in the sun, and you're getting a lot of concentrated light, a lot of warming. And if you go over here, it's the exact opposite. In the northern hemisphere, you got your hand tilted the wrong way. If you want to warm, you're up here like that. Uh, you want to warm here. 
You want to warm like that. And that's what's happening in the southern hemisphere. So it's flipped. Our seasons are flipped. And this is why. People didn't even know it was heliocentric. Not because there's anything wrong with them. It's just not obvious. Uh, and that explains, oops, yeah. When the sun is high over you, notice this person. Oh, the sun is high over my head. The sun is low. It's near the horizon. Here, the sun is low, near my horizon. High over my head, low. Left. Turning my head upside down and flipping my left and right. High over my head, low in the sky. Now, you don't have to totally connect those, but if you see that, that's why we have seasons. That's it. Done. Good? Questions? Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn are you don't have to know this. I won't ask you. So it's good to ask that question. This may not miss. Just you can file it away, and if you want to get into it, the latitude of the equator is um, is zero. If you go to a latitude of twenty three point five degrees, matching this, there's kind of something special about it. It'll be overhead, some whatever. And then if you do 90 minus 23.5, you have the Arctic Circle. 90 minus 23.5 is that, and then you can just ignore I said that. So you can explore it, a little geometry. It's kind of cool what's special about those. The other thing I wanted to say, and, and this is the third point that no one ever puts in a book or seems to, to mention, and it's actually quite huge. I think I will in the future. We're going to talk about Earth in chapter five. Earth's atmosphere is thinner than this line. If I draw it ridiculously big, which I'm about to draw ocean really big, and I imagine sunlight coming through the atmosphere, the blue light bounces all around. Sunlight would come through a short bit of atmosphere here and a much longer bit of atmosphere here. Atmosphere would absorb more light and that also creates a warm, uh, cooling effect. This is going to cool it because the sun will absorb more. It's going through more atmosphere, here less atmosphere. So, but I'm not going to ask you about that. All right, let's do this. Moon phases. These, these are, thank goodness I got the full YouTubes and the book because uh, people don't do this. Like this. Um, this could be the hardest one. We good? Questions? Now we're going to ask. All right. That's why we have seasons. You know, your friends probably don't know the difference between solstice and equinox. You probably didn't either. I mean, most people don't. But it ties us into planet Earth. And this leads us into planet Earth, chapter 5. Again, I'll let you do the eclipses with the YouTube and ask me questions, and I'll let you do the title effect with the YouTube and ask me questions. We're going to move on to chapter five, not today. So this is 4.4 4 moon phases. Why and when? You're actually going to be able to estimate when a certain phase will rise and set. It's a little bit wacky because moon's orbit's a little wacky. It's not tied to the seasons. Uh, and this is challenging. You may not get this totally clear and perfected. I'll give you the, the challenge at the end, but you'll be fine. Uh, it won't kill your grade, but you should, you should know it's pretty well, somewhat. Let's, uh, let's throw a scene from scene from space. I love these pens. Let's see. V board master. I've actually asked that the whole campus start using them. 
recycled materials, uh, non-toxic ink, refillable. Anyway, speaking of taking care of planet Earth, why not? Might as well do, it's easy enough to, to do this. All right, moon phases, quick review, chapter one. So we, we're reviewing, this is it. You know, we're not gonna do a big review for the final. That's on you now. I'm reviewing here as we go. We know that what we, when we look up, same old gig, to watch sun, to watch planets, to watch moon, we want to face sound, south, and we want to eat a sandwich. Where it rises and sets, again, varies, but it'll come up. It's going to rise somewhere in the east and set somewhere in the west. And we're going to go over this. Now, if at this point, if you have not, um, in the chat, if you've not said here, because I'll have a log of this chat, I'll go ahead and type in here so that then I'll be able to take the attendance that way. I want to get through this. This is a little dense. Um, also, once you do that, if you if you want to stop watching these sessions, then that's okay. If you get enough from the YouTube and the book, but here's a chance to ask questions. So, okay. So here we go. That's moon. It's going to rise and set. You know that we start like a lot of our ancestors did with a not lit moon, which we name the new moon. Named new because people often started the cycle there, whereas on the internet, people start it full, which is annoying. Um, it's really hard to see a full moon, so it's not that easy to just go, oh, full moon, because Sun is somewhere right around there. It's daytime, it's not lit, it's good luck. But we can keep track of it, just assume you can see it. It'll rise with the sun and set with the sun. We're gonna talk about how you see that in this drawing, it's gonna be kind of cool. Okay, let's, let's do this real fast. You know how to do this, so let's get over this. I'm not gonna draw each sandwich right here just to save time. I'm gonna go like this, but I'm gonna do something that's kind of cool, a little different. Remember that to, to, uh, to draw this correctly, you connect these dots. Put those dots in, then you can draw the Terminator. Remember, happened to be right here, uh, those are not moon phases. Those, that's an eclipse. Okay. So, uh, all right, there it is. All right, so I just need to collect the, to do that. Now it's not lit, so it's gonna be gradual, so it's going to only be a bit lit now. We know that I like to focus on the west side because the word waxing and the word waning start with a W, and it's too much to say. The west side is this and the east side is that, and that, oh, you get too confused. Let's just focus on the west side. So the west side will be a bit lit. So the only way I grab a little bit of light over here is to connect it that way. I know it's a review. Maybe you got this down, sorry. Not everyone does, everybody's had different things going on in life, but now's your chance. This is a waxing because the west is lit. And we're gonna use all this idea. So that's where you gotta make sure it's fresh. Crescent, because that's that shape, is a crescent. And then we go here, we can do this quickly. One, two, one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna cycle back. So I'll show you how that is. So at that point, I'm gonna still connect these dots. Again, now you've seen it a bunch, it's gonna be easier for you. Why wasn't, why wasn't it so hard at first? I always ask that, it's like, that's the way it is. That's where our brains are. So. That line's gonna move over this way. It's gonna start from right, go to left. That is gonna still stay lit. Of course, we know this is half lit, but we don't call it half lit because it's one week out of four or a first quarter, one quarter of a full cycle. And then we're gonna move that line over and we're gonna see it waxing for about two weeks. And we move that line over here. 
but still that side's lit. We know that it's mostly lit. We're going to use this, so I'm not just reviewing. It's mostly it's lit on the west side, so it's got to be waxing, and that mostly lit shape is a gibbous. Bam. Now watch what happens. I mean, I'm going to do this just fast here. So you should be able to do this. And don't just copy because it's like if you copy your flashcards, you're not going to do well. You haven't processed it. You haven't thought about it. You got to do something. You know, I can't, I can't let someone else shoot baskets for me and then say, oh, yeah, now I can shoot three points. Now it's going to be all in. And so what happens is this whole thing flips. Let's do it in uh, another color. Uh, whatever. All right. Yeah, red. Okay. What was dark becomes lit. Now it's going to be all lit, and that's called full. And then it can't get more lit, so it's going to wane. But watch this. What was lit is now dark. What was dark is now lit. Same terminator. Oh, the west is dark? That must be a waning. And it's not a crescent. That's not a crescent. That's not a crescent. It's all lit, then it's going to be mostly lit, gradually changing. A waning gibbous. Took two weeks to go from new to full. Three weeks to go from new to Flip the light and dark. You're going to see this on our picture. Third quarter. Flip the light and dark. Still waning, waning. Mostly lit? No, it's not. It's not mostly lit. That's wrong. It is a waning bit lit crescent. That's wrong too. Notice that's the biggest mistake. I left it for last to go back to. That's not a bit lit. That's mostly lit. So learn to just trust, draw the picture, go round and round. You can't just read it like a line. And you've got that. Okay, that's what we saw. That was a big, the big massive review here. And we're gonna do this a little bit fast, but I think setting that up is key. Here's the deal. Why does this happen? Why is this? Because moon orbits Earth. That's why we see it. And you go, well, fine. It's like saying Earth is tilted. Well, what is Earth being tilted to? Oh, concentration of light. How long we're in the day in the sunlight. What does moon's orbit do? Ah, this is key. Side of and it's in the book, but I'll write it maybe a little differently, but side of moon facing sun is lit. It's always half lit. Ah, lit. Moon is always half lit. If I stand here with a light on me, I'm always half lit. If I'm spinning, then I'll have different sides lit. But anything in space, Jupiter's half lit right now. Earth is half lit. Everything's half lit. Why? Because they're standing with a big light bulb there. We'll get into this. What do we see? So this is not half lit. I'm not talking about this is what you see from Earth. Seen from space, you do not see phases. I'll say that in a second. Side of moon facing sun is lit, half lit, uh, or lit. The side facing is all lit. Um, the side of moon facing Earth, called the near side, 
is what we see go through phases. Side of move. And you got to think about it, but you will get this. Trust me. Don't memorize the words, it's too long. I mean, go through the words, but think about it. Connect the two. Side of moon facing sun is lit. It's always lit, half lit, leaving out eclipses. Okay. The side of moon facing Earth is what you see. Like, if that's a light bulb, you see the side facing you. You see my right shoulder. Now you see my back. Now you see my left shoulder. Now you see my chest. Now you see that. So that's always true. You see the side that's close to you, near you. This is my near side. Now this is my near side to you. My back is my near side. Don't worry about moon spinning until the next, the last section. Section. Um, okay. Questions? Good. Let's do this. We got a little bit to do this. Here it is. So why does that do that? There's a lot of factors. It's not obvious. I remember going for a walk with a friend who was getting her PhD in a, a science uh, field. And uh, we're just going for a walk and looked up at the moon. And she goes, why, why is that? Why is that happening? Uh, it's not obvious. Doesn't matter who you are. It's really not obvious. But we can piece it together. When you do this, all of a sudden you look up a moon, and that's why I go so strong on this. Moon's always there. You can look up, it's going to tie you into the fact that we are on this spinning ball and orbiting sun. Wherever sun is in your sky, six months will be on the other side. And here's why, fast. I'm gonna draw this ridiculous. Sun is so much, uh, we got that, okay, I think I can do it. I think I can do it. <clears throat> Took a little bit of time there, but I wanted to make that clear. This is all review, we are reviewing. Uh, we had that time away, so. In the book I do five, four, three, two, one, go for the full picture. I'll have you read that. Let me comment about this one. This is an important one. How far away is sun from earth? Or earth from sun? Anybody there? One of you. Easy one, right? Also 93 million miles, pretty far, right? And Earth is much smaller than Earth would be that big. That's about right compared to the Sun. But we're going to draw it like this. We're going to say this is one AU astronomical unit, just so we can get a sense of how far away things are. It's very nice. And then we're going to throw Moon in here. And so Moon's going to be here. Now that's ridiculous. In fact, and write this. Yeah, that's fine. I'll do it this way. Sometimes I do the size first. That's fine. I can like this. You know the gig. If this is sun, we throw it at the back wall of the planetarium, 10 long steps. Then Earth is a grain of sand. And Moon is a grain of sand going around Earth on our pinky tip. It's so close. It's so close to it. So it's our neighbor, it's our backyard, it's easy to go to compared to anything else. In fact, it is about one four hundredths of an AU away. If you put it in miles, 240,000 miles, but one four hundred. So Sun is 400 times farther than Moon, of course, from us. 
even though we're not the center of the universe, we are in our own minds, so that's okay. Sun is 400 times farther than us. Well, how big is it? Well, again, to try to make this fairly quick, you really need to know this because we're going to build on it. You're going to know how wide all the planets are and how far apart they are in Chapter 7. If there's a memory aid, just do it over and over. Do quick reviews throughout the day. Keep it, know it, own it. Here it is. If this is Earth, then what I say is that this is one Earth width, one diameter of Earth. Another symbol for Earth is this. I just think it starts to get a little bit too much. I think the E is might be easier to remember, but it's kind of you are here. Uh, one diameter of Earth. And if you think about it, it's one diameter wide this way, this way, and back three ways. So sometimes you people give the volume. That number is really hard to even imagine. So I think this works out better. And you say, well, how big is moon? You look up and go, well, it's right there. How big is it? I don't know. I can't tell. It depends on how far away it is. And this is kind of cool. If you cut it in half, then it'd be like this. You're going to learn that that's how big Mars is. So you got to cut it in half again. Like this. That's how big moon is. You cut it in half sideways, top to bottom, and front to back. You cut it in half, and it shrinks down all directions, creating this little guy. That's moon. And if you wanted, you can draw four across. You see, the diameter of moon is about one-fourth the diameter of Earth. The width, the diameter. I also want you to know this last little bit, you're gonna because we're gonna build on it. So make sure you start just just say it over and over. That's all you gotta do. It's there for you. The diameter of sun, which we do use that symbol a lot. It's like heliocentric, sun at the center. The diameter of sun is about 100 diameters of Earth. Diameter of Earth is four times the diameter of Moon, so that's about 400 diameters of Moon. Sun is 400 times farther than Moon and 400 times wider. And that does something cool. And that lets you understand solar eclipses. All this stuff, you know, I designed to, to connect it, to build it. Watch this. I can even show this to you now. I can do this better here than I can in class. This guy's half as wide as my circle. This guy's a quarter. This one's one half of this. This is twice as wide as this guy. You can see that. But as I move it farther away, it looks smaller. My hand looks huge. Look at my huge hand. Right? So in fact, if I take that distance and I double it, they look the same size. If I take something 400 times wider and I make it 400 times farther, it will look the same size. And how big? Surprising. This is very surprising. Look at moon. Don't do this with sun. With moon, take your fingerprint. If I go like this, the angle from one side to the other is 10 degrees. My thumb length is 5. Across my pinky is 1 degree. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Do you think that a full moon is wider or not as wide as your pinky tip across it at arm's length. Quick. Wider, not as wide, same. Quick, go, go, go. You can do it, go, go, go team, go, go.
Jump in, play. Come on, come on, come on. Just guess. It's okay to be wrong. No one cares. I mean, who would know? It's it's good to be wrong. When you when you throw it out there and then you're wrong, you correct it. It's same as very close. It's about half as wide. It's half. I, it seems like if I think of a full moon, I'm thinking it's going to be bigger than what that my pinky nail looks like. It's actually half as wide. Try it. On the horizon, there's a little distortion, but try it. Okay. Anyway, that's important to realize. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going. Know those numbers. Just write them down and look at them. Just say them randomly to random people, but you'll have to be imaginary people right now. Um, just yell it out. <laughs> know that, because that's what's going to make this make sense. Why do we have moon phases? Here's the picture. It's in the book, every single step. Let's not go through the steps. I have five parts. Each part, three steps. I try to make it symmetric. There goes my softball. Okay, so what I'm going to do is say sun is way out there. You know how far. So that's sunlight. Sun light coming from way out there. Way out there. Earth, I'm going to make Earth. I'm not going to worry too, too much about the size. I'm going to go like this. That's Earth. Now, this is going to be a top view. So North Pole's in the center, not tilted. Why? Because I want to see moon go around it. North Pole. Don't worry about tilt or seasons. That's too complicated. Here we go. Terminator. Night and day. You can see it. Sunlight. We're going to spit across sunrise, sunset. Let's check that out real quick. I'm going to do this fast. All right. Sunrise, sunset. So imagine a tall person to exaggerate all this. Oh, sorry. Earth spins eastward, and that would be counterclockwise here. 24 hours. So six hours, six hours, six hours, six hours. In fact, we're going to do every three hours. Six hours, six hours, six hours. Spins around once. Sunrise. Oops, no, sunset. Sunrise. In between, noon. Why is this noon? Make sure you see this and we count it down. It's in the book, etc. Make sure you draw the arrow. Details matter. That's east. There's your big head. There's your arms, legs if you want. And if you look, you'll see sun not on the east horizon, not on the west horizon. It's This is your ground. You're looking up that picture, right? It's not on the east. You see it between east and west on the meridian at noon. That, my friends, is 12 noon. And then I'm going to go around and I'm going to go, oh, about three hours. I'm going to be over here. That's 3 p.m. past the meridian. And look where sun is. This is important. Even if I drew it here, which I'm going to do for the moon, even if I drew sun there, I would say sun is to the right, not at the circle, because my drawing is not scale. Here I am. Good enough for us. 6 p.m. Sun is to the right. Then I can't see it. 9 p.m. I can't see it. 12 MDNT, midnight. 3 a.m. And then east, spinning east, that arrow is critical. It'll help you remember. There it is, sun. Look at that. Sun is rising over my east horizon. Oops, uh, 6 a.m. Now it's not on my horizon, it's higher. Here's my horizon. Now it's higher. Now it's on the meridian. Antes meridian, on the meridian, past the meridian, setting. Uh, 9 uh, a.m. Okay. Any questions? Check that out. See if you can take a minute, just a minute, to on your paper, draw that and label it. Just a minute. I'll leave you.
right so this is like me learning a song on a guitar you whatever like okay or learning some something initially i'm kind of cheating right i mean i'm so you might look and go but at some point you want to be able to take a blank sheet not look at this boom you got it i understand it this is where sun is to the right to the right to the right getting higher and higher getting lower and lower sunrise sunset as i cross the terminator cool what's that got to do with moon well moon moon of course orbits us in about four weeks good enough and we can look at it every day but that's ridiculous it doesn't change that much we need those eight phases we just reviewed so I can put it at that position. That's going to be give me one phase. And then the next day it might be here, 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 here. It orbits eastward very slowly. Now there's stuff that they do that's so bad in a lot of books and, and uh, a, a lot of places on the web. So be very careful. You don't want to draw them all here. And we're looking from space. So we, we could look at this position, this position, one, two, it could be here, it could be here. A week later, it's over here, three. Uh, a few days later, it's over here, four. A few days later, it's over here. So that's one week, two week. A few days later, it's here. So there's another one, one, two, three, four, five, six. A few days later, so that's three weeks, seven, eight, nine. Oops, not nine, <laughs> we're, we're back to the same. Eight, eight phases. So when moon's at these different positions, it's going to show us different phases, really key. So new, first quarter, <laughs> one week, full, third quarter, it's going to go through the phases. Why? Well, you're looking from space because you're a bunch of aliens. And so I'm going to throw moon in there. Now watch this. I'm going to, sunlight's hitting there. Right? That's the Terminator. Notice that from space, this is critical. That is not a first quarter. You might say, oh, that's a first quarter. No, it isn't. Why? Because you're an alien and you're looking at it from space. And you don't see phases from space. All you see is that moon is always half lit. Forget about spinning. We'll get to that. Moon is always half lit from space. You don't see phases. They've got to text you a picture. What do they see from Earth? Send me a text box, would you please? And I'll eat sandwich. And we'll look at what phase it is and when it rises and when it sets. And I'm going to draw the terminators here. We're almost there. Hang in there. Now you don't have to walk over to another class anyway. You might have clicked over to another class. Okay, so what am I seeing? Here's the key. We're almost there. Sunlight is here. No matter where I draw it, I draw it exactly the same, seen from space. But if I want to see what the Earthlings see and when it rises and sets, I do this. I go, huh, my friend down on Earth sees this. Can you see the phase that they see? The side facing Earth is not lit. That's a new moon. It's with sun in conjunction. Occasionally, the shadow hits Earth, solar eclipse. That's the other video. If, however, two weeks later it's over here, and what I should do, but I won't do it, I won't do it quite yet. Two weeks later, it's over here. Sunlight hits here. What do Earthlings see? The side facing Earth is all lit, a full moon. But these are on different days. Remember this. Moon is here and we spin around and it stays there. It moves a little bit. So don't draw them all because it looks like, oh, that's where new moon is at noon. No, it isn't. That's where moon is all day. That's where moon is all day two weeks later. All day. Okay, so I just need the side near Earth. That's the side we see. I do this in the book like. Uh, crazy, and I do think I do that on YouTube. So uh, <clears throat> let's get rid of these. Let's take another day. Let's take a look if it's here. I'm going to go kind of quickly, but I'm going to bring some cool stuff in. Seen from space, I don't see phases. I see this it's half lit. Moon's always half lit. But what is what do Earthlings see? They see the near side. 
that. Don't draw that. That's a common mistake. Draw that. We're, these people are on the surface of Earth. We want to see the half of moon facing Earth. We want to draw it. And I might have you upload this picture. Make sure you can do it. This is one of the hardest. That's the near side. Cool. You're, you've got a ton of points already. But now we want to say, what does she see? I mean, what, what out of the side that's facing Earth, how much of that side is lit? A little bit. Is it a bit lit or? Look at that. Mostly lit. It's mostly lit, right? The side facing Earth is what we see. And here, that side is mostly lit. What phase is that? Yes, I read your name. You're, it's a gibbous. That's, that's the shape, is a gibbous. Now I got to go, is it waxing or waning? Oh, you got to ask her. And she's going to look at not her east, that's why I have the arrow, but her west horizon. And she's going to look up and go, hey, the west side is lit or dark. dark. West side, dark, waning. Give us. And so I'm going to go up here and we go west side, dark, mostly lit, waning gibbous, put the name, and the last thing I'm going to do, and I'll show you an easy way to pay for your staying over. Um, when does it rise and set? If this is her horizon, she can't see moon. My picture is deceptive. If this is horizon, you might say she can't see moon, but moon is much farther out. So in fact, she would see moon rise over her east horizon here. She would see moon. I'm going to not change the direction of the arrow down and to the left, straight down and to the left. Don't point at the circle because it's the scale is wrong. Now she's going to see it go above her horizon. Now it's going to be above her head. Now it's going to get lower. And now it's going to set. In fact, she sees it when she's on the side of Earth near Moon. She's on the side of Earth near Moon. It's going to rise 9 p.m. around, somewhere in the evening. It's going to be high 3 a.m. And it's going to set 9 a.m. from that picture, approximately, right? And that means if we ever get back to campus and it's one of these phases and you're driving to campus in the morning, you'll be able to see moon setting over, over Mount Town. Do it a bunch. Believe in yourself that you can do it. Question? It's on the YouTube too. Um, do it for all eight phases, power through it, struggle through it, just like I am with stuff I'm learning, whatever, we're all doing it. But the difference between you and someone else is that if you power through it, you have something that's uncommon. And I hopefully enjoy, if you really want, here's the challenge, if you want to, you know, figure out what moon phase is, and then if you imagine this, and you think about what time it'll rise and set about, you might, you can even figure out where it is in your sky and you can go out and go, oh, there it is. And, and it actually works, but that's quite a challenge. I mean, you would totally, you could do it. You could do it. If you really tried, you could do that. And you really freak people out. So any questions? Um, how many people are still with me? Uh, <laughs> How do I find the uh, YouTube uh, videos for, for you? So, YouTube, the channel is Your Astronomy Coach, just like the book. Go to the, uh, the channel, then go to Playlist. Click Playlist, and it'll have playlists that are out of order because I haven't figured out how to order them. But uh, Chapter 4, YouTube, 
I think I've got one dumb one on uh, <laughs> on chapter three, but let's see, I've got chapter four, and this is the hard one. We did class on chapter three. Try to review chapter three each day too, like what did Galileo see? What are Kepler's laws, Newton's laws? What did Brahe do? Those kind of things. Ptolemy, Cur Copernicus, just like we did in class, I think. Uh, then you'll you'll really know all this. And what we've been doing is building. So we've been reviewing chapter one and connecting it with us. So your astronomy coach on YouTube, uh, go to the channel, click playlists, and then find the chapter that you want. And I'll be adding as much as I can because they, they take longer to make than they than they are. But I'll probably be going to campus, but they've actually sanitized the or uh, sterilize the campus uh, in a sense. So, um, making some videos. Any other questions? Does that answer that? You good? Uh, this is really substantial, and it does. I, I will say this. I think that's. It takes you to an unusual, <laughs> at least as far as we know, unusual point of view and understanding of something that, think about it. it, it took thousands of years for people to get this understanding because we're stuck here. And so this perspective, sometimes we take it for granted, like everyone knows that, like no, this, most people don't. Most scientists don't know this, most, unless you study it, and unless it's laid out, which is what I'm trying to do here. Um, it's just not obvious, but it's pretty cool. And it, it changes your perspective of sunrise and sunset. Oh, it's not going around us. As we spin, it gets higher and then lower. So I hope you guys have some nice sunset tonight. Um, spring break. It is, uh, oh, it is, uh, wait, hold on. It is, oh yeah, it is spring break. Nice. <laughs> now I should have a corona, but that's not kosher, but uh <laughs> at least lime. Um yeah, so here's my here's my substitute for corona and the lime. <laughs> so we'll be back here after spring break on Tuesday, like the same time. This is how we're gonna start having class. Yes. Yes. Every Tuesday, Thursday. I'll try to, I'll probably have to, I will have to post this on YouTube and the one that I did on Tuesday or some version of that. Oh, this is not the first one. No, I did it on a Tuesday as well, but you know, it, it, it was crazy. It was hard for me to like, how am I going to do this? This is crazy. I can't teach this class. I'm not working with people. Okay. But I, th I think we can do it. I think we can actually, you know, always deal with this adversity and make the, the best uh, of it. And, uh, Okay, yeah. awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys uh, know that I'm here. Send me emails if you've got questions. <laughs> I don't know if you can communicate with each other. We'll get it worked out. Know that you can learn this. You can learn this, man. You can learn anything because because this is this is a lot, but it pulls it together. Uh, spring break is still on. We can't see it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you can learn how to enjoy yourself. <laughs> Very difficult to sit at a beach with a nice warm breeze and a palm tree, but, you know, we'll manage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and I, uh, I'll shut up here in a second, but, <laughs> but we're going into chapter five. And I think there are multiple things that you can get out of this class besides the credit. Mm -hmm. And one is to really appreciate planet earth and a blue sky and uh, our ocean and see what's beneath the surface and how the six layers of earth are connected and uh you know and how we how we behave and you never totally get it i don't get it all you you can't no no astronomer gets it all um it's so big and so amazing but you can learn a lot about earth and how it's connected and think about other worlds and thinking about taking care of this one and it's all cool and think about being cousins because really it's kind of silly we really are cousins although some of our cousins we might disagree with vehemently but um i think there's a cool connectedness that can come out of this 
And if you're interested in STEM, just talk with me. We'll talk about that. But if you're doing other stuff, if it wasn't for artists, we wouldn't have this picture. Okay, I'll be quiet. Spring break. Woohoo! We're having cocktail hour with friends tonight on Zoom. <laughs> they suggest that. <laughs> so, thanks, guys. It's nice to hear your voices and see your names and know you're there because uh, I enjoyed getting to know you luckily in class that's the one thing that we miss but we'll power through All right, professor you're doing a great job keep it up thank you appreciate it guys it's a pleasure all right i'll be i'll be working through this one but it'll it'll be fun we'll get it done good thank you professor all right, all right. thank you your coronas <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Be safe.